Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Mewtwo Fan Nate, and welcome to a very new series on the channel. Uh, today we are going to be doing a uh, kind of a collaboration with my good friend uh, Token. Please introduce yourself. Hey, what's up everyone? It is Token, and uh, I'm just really excited to get this team builder done and to have a new little collaboration with my good friend Nate. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's good to have you here. I really wanted to do this. Uh, so. As you guys know, we've been doing, uh, or if you didn't know, we've been doing a How to VGC series on my channel. Basically, you know, we're, we're just trying to get better at How to VGC. And I think um, a good way to get better at it would to be call in uh, someone who's a little bit more experienced in the format. So that's why I have uh, Token here to uh, help me out. Uh, we decided to build a team together, uh, and we're going to be going over it. And if you guys want to check out how this team does, um, there will be a link to Token's channel in my description. Uh, I highly recommend that you guys go over there and um, uh, subscribe to him because we're going to be doing some uh, battle spot uh, testing on, on his side. So make sure you guys uh, do that after uh, we're uh, done going over the team. So um, you ready to start talking about the team, Token? Yeah, I'm ready when you are, man. Okay, so... Um, Basically, when I came to Token, I said I really want to use Tapu Fini. Uh, so, that's exactly what we did. Token said, you know, the, the best way to run Tapu Fini is probably with a calm mindset. So, uh, that's exactly what we did. Um, so, we have Muddy Water just for, you know, spread damage to hit both of the Pokemon. Uh, Wide Guard isn't really too popular right now, right? Just really on Cell Steel and maybe Pelipper and Gigalith. Those are really the only Wide Guard Pokemon, right? Arachnid. Arachnid. But I, I honestly, from my experience, I haven't seen many Pokemon go for Wide Guard. Um, what What are your thoughts on that? Um, it's. <clears throat> I personally see it gaining a little bit more attraction now with a, a lot of double targeting moves, and then obviously the the EV team where you use the Evo Boost team where you use EV Z move. Blah blah blah. A lot of people want to go for double, two double targeting moves to attack that team. So then people will have mm. White Guard Smurgle on that team to stop that. So um, it's definitely picking up a little bit, but it's still not. Um, it's still not something that's like absurd. That's like all over the meta to where Muddy Water still isn't a very very good move. And then we have uh, so obviously we have Calm Mind because we want to get those boosts. Uh, we have Moonblast because uh, Moonblast is just a really good move to have. I mean, there's what is it, like a 10% chance to drop your opponent's special attack, and then it's also stab, single targeting, so uh, pretty good move. Uh, as for the item we have on there, we have a Wiki Berry, so basically anytime we get down to around 25% of health, it restores our uh, health 50% uh, of what it is, so uh, really good way to potentially get back up to almost uh, almost full on that one. Um, and then we have Protect because Protect is just one of the, uh, the best moves in the, uh, in, you know, in the VGC game, unless you're, like, Focus Sash, well, actually, no, especially if you're Focus Sash, unless you're, like, Scarfed, or, um, what other items would you not have Protect on, unless you're, like, Assault Vest. Assault Vest. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, Tabu Fini, very interesting mod, it's definitely gaining a lot of traction, um, I think, especially in the Japan meta, it seems like a lot of... Players are um, opting to try out Tapu Fini a little bit more in that Japan meta, especially seeing how bulky this meta is. And with Tapu Fini being one of the most bulky, if not the most bulky of all the Tapus, not 100% you know, sure on that, but it's definitely really up there in bulk. And uh, yeah, uh, Muddy Water is just such a good move if it hits, obviously, with its, uh, I think it's 85 accuracy, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, but um, uh, just the fact that it can lower accuracy and then start to miss moves and win the game literally off of that. And then obviously uh, Moonblast because we didn't want two double target moves in case our opponent is running wide guard. And Moonblast obviously uh, it's going to do more, more damage than Dazzling Gleam in general though. And we could definitely pick up some good KOs with that. Um, so maybe some guard chomps and stuff like that. And then the the boost that those berries got, especially uh, Wiki Berry and uh, can't think of the other the one. The Figgy that. Berry. That's the other Figgy one. Berry. The boost that those berries got to where now they're pretty much like better citrus berries as long as you hit that that uh 25 percent they're honestly just so good now so uh wiki berry is going to come into uh it's going to be really really good because you take all this time to knock uh to get tapu fini to a reasonable low amount of health after 
after dealing with all of this bulk as we are invested heavily in our defenses and then the wiki berry just boosts us almost all the way up back to full health so very very nice and then obviously misty Tur misty surge which is uh, such a good uh it's really good uh, now too just because of the yeah. whole uh gastrodon and uh basically just toxic stalling in vgc yeah toxic is it's it's falling off a little bit but it's still definitely viable mainly misty surge is really good because then it disallows our opponent from burning our Gigalith, disallows them from burning ourselves still up if we have that out. It disallows discharge from getting a para on our... Uh, Which is super good, especially for speed control. Yeah, yeah, there's just so many different, uh, different uh, statuses that can really hamper your chances of winning. And they all have this low chance of happening, but when they happen, it can definitely lower your chance of winning. And it's really nice that uh, Misty Search can stop that, because then there's also... Uh, try attack from Porygon, you know, that's getting a little bit lower in usage still, it's still there, so there's a lot of status that can really uh, derail your chances of winning a game, so Misty Surge really does, uh, it puts you in the driver's seat with not having to, uh, you can't just blame the game on hacks at that point because you are protected, so I like it. Yeah, alright, so now moving on to uh, Gigalith. Um, Gigalith, the, um, I really like Gigalith in this meta because uh, weather is like super important, especially with uh, Torkoal, Pelipper, Politoed, everything you know is running around. Having control of the weather is definitely something uh, that you want, uh, that you want to have. Um, so the EV spread that we have here is actually taken, uh, I believe, from Shady Penguin. Um, we got that from his uh, team report. Uh, John, was that what? It, is that what it was? Yeah, it's from it's from Jonathan. Um, yeah, it's taken right from him. You want to talk about the uh, the EV spreads on this one? Okay, so what exactly this Gigalith is here to do is to underspeed everything that isn't a Torkoal and make sure that we have sand up before they can have their their rain up or any other weather that isn't Torkoal. Torkoal is just so damn slow, so we can't be slower than a Torkoal even with our uh, sassy nature. But exactly what this spread does is 252 in HP. Just want to be very, very bulky to take hits as well as possible. Then 116 in attack. This allows us to still Oko almost every single Tapu Lele set unless it's running some really high amount of bulk, which is highly unlikely, especially with how um, many people are using Scarf uh, Lele right now. And um, uh, what else? What else does the attack EVs do? We also, um, we also hit... Uh, I think there's some things we take out with Earthquake. Again, I can't completely remember, but I think Total Tomorrow's one of the things that this Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, definitely take out Total Tomorrow. And then there's a few other things. I can't remember all of them right now. And then uh, the defense investment allows us to uh, more than likely, well, there's a huge chance of us living a close combat from a Hariyama, Hariyama that they've taken us out. I think it only has like a 13% chance or something for, uh, to take us out. Obviously live the EQs from Garchop, that's, that was never an issue. And then um, there's a few a few other things. I think we also take a... Uh, we, no, I don't think we do, but there's a few other things that the uh, defense does for us, but um, can't think of every single one. And then the special attack, the special defense was a huge thing for us. Uh, yeah. 84 with, with the sassy nature allows us to uh, take so many water attack, attacks so well as long as we're in sand. There's like a 0.4% chance of Politoed or of Tapu Fini um, to hit KOing us with this special defense investment. We also cannot be taken out by a um, uh, Tapu Coco's um, Thunderbolt in Electric Terrain. That is going to be a 3 hit KO I'm pretty sure on this set. Yeah, exactly. Then, yeah, and then we two hit, two hit KO with back, and then there's one there's one more thing that this special defense investment does for us. I can't. can't I can't remember. remember the last thing. Oh, I it's the Tapu Tapu Lele Psychic in Psychic Terrain. As yep. long as it's a, or even if it is Life Orb and Modest, we have a uh, we have a little chance of uh, living that too. So at least gives us the chance of maybe living that. Considering the fact that like there's so many different melee sets that you can't 100% know what you're going up against, so it's nice to to know. Oh, uh, I think we're having a little bit of a technical difficulties here. So basically, with Gigalith, we can we can handle um, the Tapu Leles, which is pretty clutch. Uh, so moving on to Salamence, um, this set is very basic. Um, I think it's very similar to what Wolfie Glick was running. Um, it might, I'm not sure if it's the exact same set, 
but um, definitely this I definitely believe it's the same moves um, we are running the Yachi Berry just because there are some uh, hidden power ice uh, you know hidden power ices that we do want to live like example from like uh, Tapu Coco we could definitely live one of those um, Draco Meteor um, hits everything really hard uh, the flamethrower um, hits Celesteela's substitute is really good so that way um, if you're predicting someone to switch out potentially or something like that you can set up a sub and then you can get off a couple uh, you can get a hit off for free and then protect again is just um, because it's protected it's a really great move um, timid uh, max speed uh, max special attack four in special defense is there anything you want to say about the set token yeah, just very simple set, like you said, and Yachi allows us to live any ice type attack that isn't a blizzard, and that isn't a ice beam from a Porygon Z. I'm pretty sure it allows us to live any other any other ice type attack other than those two, so that's really nice for Salamence, who's four times weak to those ice type attacks. And other than that, Nate pretty much said it all. Substitute's really, really clutch, because a lot of people do switch out on Salamence, knowing that it has those uh, that flamethrower to hit stuff like Kartana, and knowing that it also has that Draco Meteor to hit other dragons and just to hit other things very hard in general so um really really nice obviously the uh the dragon z move is what wolfie would his salamance which is really nice because it practically allows you to get off two draco meteors but not have the special attack drop from the first one or or from the second one whichever whichever or uh if you have that uh z move but uh we obviously have our Z crystal on our given list, that Rocky MZ. It works better for this team, in my opinion. And uh, we can always, obviously always work around Salamence's special attack being lowered. Especially with Flamethrower, a lot of the things that we Flamethrower, we don't really... We can still be minus two and still deal with them really well. Exactly, so, uh, like things like Kartana. Yeah, I mean, really... mainly Kartana's defense is so weak that we can easily be minus two and still deal with it well. Okay. So, um, also, Intimidate's a great ability in this uh, in this meta. Just because of the uh, physical attackers like Tapu Bulu, um, Kartana, just really uh, great for, and uh, Alola Marowak as well. Those things do not appreciate being intimidated. So I guess we'll move on to the Celesteela. And I know that you oh, did. Uh, That's the huge thing about Salamence. It has a good matchup against pretty much all the physical attackers on the meta, other than maybe like Arcanine, but none of the physical attackers it's really like Arcanine. Other than that, the uh, Salamence has a great matchup against like all the physical attackers. Yep. Now, uh, I'll let you talk about uh, Celesteela just because um, you were the one that, do that was doing uh, most of the calcs on it. Alright, so the Celesteela set is obviously left the best item on Celesteela. I almost never even want to use it if, if I can't put the leftovers on it. Uh, because of the fact that just it gaining that residual recovery just is so crucial for its longevity. And then add it with Lead Seed, it just kind of just sits there the whole game. And, uh, uh, standard move set of heavy slam substitute seed and protect. Uh, wide guard was something that we considered, and we just know that substitute is just so good though, especially when you catch your opponent in a, pro uh, a protect or a switch out that you knew they were going to do. Excuse me, you get that protect off. I mean that substitute off, and uh, now they have a huge threat hanging out behind a substitute. And if they don't have an electric type move, breaking breaking the sub is just always so difficult to do. And uh, 116 in HP, just mainly uh, throwing the EVs that we had left over. It's kind of the last thing we put EVs in. 12 in attack, still gives us the Oko on um, Tapu Lele with Heavy Slam. Uh, always, unless, once again, just like with Gigalith, unless it's running some really, really high amount of bulk, which is highly unlikely with the, the Tapu Leles that are already popular right now in the meta. 84 in defense, this allows us to take Rock Slides from Garchomp better, Waterfalls from Gyarados better. There's just so many different... Uh, um, physical type move, uh, physical moves that allows us to turn those from like three hit KOs to even four hit KOs, especially with Leech Seed and uh, Leftovers recover, Recovery, and um, um, and just in general, there's like so many. I can't even think of. Then the special attack investment is really really nice. Um, the only thing I think we don't live that's like uh, I would have liked to have lived, but I didn't want to go over too overboard with the special defense investment. Is that Tapu Co Life Orb, Tapu Coco, Thunderbolt, and Electric Terrain? That's about the only thing that's 100% going to take us out. Right choose Thunderbolt and Electric Terrain, no matter what, is a two hit KO inside or outside of it. Um, what else was a two hit KO? There were so many different. Obviously, Tapu Lele's Thunderbolt is going to be a two hit KO, even if even that. 
uh, depending on its special attack investment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's like so many other things that. Oh, flamethrower, uh, the mirror. We're obviously going to be faster than other Celestils with that uh, speed investment at 140, and we take those flamethrowers really, really nicely from there. We're also three hit KO'd by our own Salamance set. If, uh, obviously, this is from Wolfie Glick. Other than uh, us running Yachi over the, uh, the Zemu. So this is a very common set. So we are three hit KO'd by Flamethrower from that Salamence set. So that's also really, really nice. And um, yeah, the 140 in speed is just to outspeed those slow tier things and a little bit of the mid, uh, the mid tier speed things, such as like um, Togedemaru, uh, Tapu Bulu. Um, we, we get to hit Tapu Bulu for a good 80% likely uh, before it can do anything. We outspeed Marowak so we can always sub before it can uh, uh, flare blitz so that we can live for another turn and that it just literally is just chipping away at its health because it won't be faster than us with this investment unless it's 252 plus a speed invested nature which is highly unlikely because uh, Marowak definitely loves that bulk that you can put on it and then what else uh, there's a few other things there's a few other things that we're just able to like sub up on before they can do anything anything to us which is really really nice and uh, obviously like i said substitute lee seed is so freaking good so i really like it all right um and now we're gonna move on to tapu coco which is a very uh standard set but the reason why it's standard is because it's so darn good uh timid max speed um just so that way you can speed tie with like other tapu cocos um thunderbolt volt switch is really just really great for positioning um, Dazzling Gleam is a good way to hit Garchomps and um, other dragons. Uh, protect, again, because um, Protect is just a great move. Uh, and uh, Electric Surge is really good, um, you know, giving you that uh, 1.5 times boost to all of your electric type moves. And Life Orb is just so that way you can hit a little bit harder. And you definitely need the Life Orb because or else it'll miss out on some knockouts. Um, and I think that's about it for Tapu Koko, unless you can think of something else to say about it. You pretty much said everything. Life Orb allows us to hit harder. Electric Terrain allows us to hit harder. So with both of those going for us, sometimes we'll be able to hit things really hard. Both switch to get out of situations that we can get out of, considering that a lot of teams do have a Lola Marowak or a Togedemaru. So that is something to uh, think about every time you do click your electric type move. But um, I have recently seen a lot of players trying to advocate that Tapu Koko might be the worst Tapu right now, considering the fact that they're, that uh, Marowak is number one in usage right now on Battle Spot. So people are thinking, oh, and how, how easily Marowak happens. But if there's not a Marowak on the field, if you deal with the Marowak, Tapu Koko is literally so good. They're definitely one of the best Pokemon in the format, in my opinion. So just to disperse those uh, uh, those people trying to say that Tapu Koko isn't good, it is so good. And just, I th and I think if you look at like the rest of our if you look at the rest of our team, like uh, we deal with uh, the Alola Marowak fairly well. Tapu Fini, Gigalith, Salamence, and an Arcanine. Those match up pretty well against a uh, Alola Marowak, in my opinion. Yeah, the, the the top three they definitely don't mind it at all. And then even Arcanine doesn't, doesn't uh, mind it either. Which is the next Pokemon? So if you want to take over for that one, uh, yeah, sure. Um, why does this thing have? I must have gotten rid of it. What did we have? We had um. Snarl, protect. Snarl, okay, for some reason, uh, Showdown glitched and put Body Slam on there, and I was so confused. <laughs> um. So yeah, definitely don't put Body Slam on your Arcanine because that would be trash. Um, so Snarl is a great move to have because uh, obviously it does um, lower your opponent's uh, special attack by one stage and it does hit both of your opponents. So um, special attackers don't like this, meaning like Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, um, even Tapu Finis. Um, I wouldn't recommend going up uh, doing it against my Mylotic because then you'll give him a competitive boost. But other than that, um, Snarl is just a really great way to um, get rid of uh, your special attacker's uh, hard hitting moves and it lets you to live uh, some other uh, moves. Uh, Flamethrower is really good. Uh, with this investment, uh, with 108 EVs and special attack, um, depending on the Celesteel's investment, uh, there's a pretty good chance that we can 2 KO it. If it's like not invested in uh, special defense like at all, it's guaranteed to a KO, but um, 
anything other than that, like it's still a pretty good chance that we do to a KO it. Will Wisp is really good. Um, because you know physical attackers such as the Garchomp and things like that that are running around. Uh, if we Will O Wisp a Garchomp, there's no way that it two KOs us with um, with Earthquake. So I think that's pretty good. Intimidate is like super clutch because um, with all the physical attackers, like for example like Garchomp, uh, Alolan Marowak, they just really don't appreciate it. Another thing that's really nice about Snarl and Arcanine is that if you get that little bit of super effective chip damage off on an Alolan Marowak, it does put it in range um, of a Draco Meteor from Salamence, which is like super clutch. Um, I'm trying to remember what any of the other EVs do, but I'm, I can't really think of them at the top of my head. I think we can live uh, Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko um, in Electric Terrain. Uh, Token, is there any EVs that you remember off the top of your head? Because I'm kind of blanking on the rest of them. All right, well, I do remember the speed EVs. The speed is to outspeed so many things that threaten Arcanine, and to be able to will with some first, like a Gyarados, you can uh, outspeed Gyarados, and you can will with that first. And um, there's a few other things. Togemaru, of course, will with that thing right away, so it's only relying on relying on Nuzzle. Um, there's a few other things. A few other uh, physical attackers that you outspeed Bulu, you outspeed them, and you can get that will with off first. And, Which is uh, super clutch. Yeah, you nuke them as a threat. Willowis is so good because so few teams are running Lumberry because of because uh, it's like Willowis isn't like very very common. Uh, Arcanine's only the only Pokemon who can really run it well right now. I guess uh, what's it? Uh, Mimikyu is another one that might be running it, but a lot of people are opting for that curse set right now for Mimikyu. So Willowis really isn't that common. So almost nothing's running Lumberry. So if you can really uh, Willowis things, you can nuke them as a threat, especially Garchomp, which is one of the best Pokemon in the format right now. Exactly. Will o Wisp that is just so, so good. And then Citrus Berry, I just want to say how I think Citrus Berry is, uh, how I think Arcanine uh, with the Citrus Berry is the Pokemon who utilizes Citrus Berry the best in the entire format. I do also really like it on Tapu Lele, even though a lot of other people like Top for the Life Orb or the Scarf, but I also like it on my own. But I feel like uh, Arcanine is the best Citrus Berry user in the format. I agree. Consider considering it does suffer from poor move syndrome, as you can, uh, it's really hard to add on, um, what is it called, Morning Sun. It's really hard to get an added on to its moveset, considering that you do, you want your fire type stab, you want will o -Wisp to burn things, and then you definitely want Snarl. I almost don't see any Arcanine set not running Snarl at this point. And then there's the physical attacking Arcanine sets that are running Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, and Snarl, and then Protect. So it's almost impossible, because you all obviously, obviously want Protect on a fire type that is uh, weak to so many things that are good in the format. So it's really hard to get a Morning Sun added on there, so you can't really uh, recover up your own health. So that Citrus Berry comes in so clutch, and Arcanine uses it, uh, utilizes it so well. Can't remember the special defense investment fully, but I think it allows us to like live one of like Scalds and Rain from a, uh, or maybe not, I doubt, it depends on the special attack investment. I feel like if a Polytoad's not really that invested, we can definitely live a Scald and Rain. But, uh, Obviously, would rather not be taking those. Rather have that Gigalith it, and we have that. So I feel like Arcanine actually kind of molds this entire team together with its um, Intimidate, which offers us double Intimidate, which I feel is really, really underrated right now in this meta because there's so many really good physical attackers. Double Intimidate, but then also with the option of Snarl. So then at the same time that we just intimidated your physical attacker, that's on the field twice. We can also then Snarl your uh, special attacker down. Oh, that's what it is. You, the speed also allows you to outspeed Lele and get that Snarl off before it can attack, which allows you to even uh, live the um, Life Orb Psychic in its Psychic terrain. So that's really, really clutch. And uh, yeah, I feel like Arcanine really just uh, is the glue to this team. It's the Gorilla Glue for this team. I agree. Alright, so guys, that is the team. Uh, if you guys want to see all the battles, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to Token and um, check them out as we're going to be going over there in a couple seconds. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more VGC content. And uh, have yourselves a good day, and we will see you guys uh, next time. Peace out. Thank you all so much. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.